Today's shir begins four lines from the bottom of the Lamid Hey Omid Beis. As you are quite familiar, we're learning in our Gemara markings recorded Shurim in the context of the Daf Yomi cycle. With regard to today's Shior, in all likelihood at this point, we will be combining Daf Lamed Zion together with Daf Lamed Vov. So take note of the topic heading that you see on the side of the Gemara. You might notice that we indicate that this sukya, this discussion goes to Lamed Ches, Omid Aleph. We have entitled this sukya Heter Mitztaref Le'isor. This concept is very unusual. The Torah mentions various items that are forbidden to consume, and the quantity of the forbidden item, generally speaking, is an olive quantity. In the case of a nausea, so we know that the vine products, wine and grape-related items, are forbidden to consume. The minimum amount to be considered guilty would be an olive quantity. Heter, mitzvah for the Easter, means that even if you have less than an olive quantity of forbidden material, but combined with allowed material, you would have an olive quantity. So you have a combination of, we'll say, majority of prohibited, plus allowed, combined into one unit, and you eat that, you will be in violation. That's heter, that which is permitted, is mitzvah, combines with the isor to create the minimum prohibited quantity. We'll see examples of that as we get into the Gemara itself. But what's unique is that when in this case you don't have the minimum amount of prohibited substance, and still one will be in violation. We continue on our, in our note on the side, Ode in Yonim Shiyuz Kuru, there are other principles that will be mentioned throughout this sugya. Very significant principles that appear in many different places throughout the Shas, and you find them concentrated in our sugya. You have the concept of Kezayis Bechtei Achilles Pras, that involves a minimum amount of time in which to consume a kezayis, an olive quantity. For argument's sake, the, the time of kedei achilas pras would be four minutes. That means that while you are eating some food and mixed into the food is forbidden food, if while eating the food in the course of four minutes, you also end up consuming an olive quantity of the forbidden material mixed in, that would be considered a Torah violation of eating that which is prohibited. Another concept that we will encounter, ta'am ki'ikr, where you have the mere taste of something prohibited, is considered as if it's the original substance itself. We'll see examples of that in the Gemara as well. Imagine if you were to take some grapes and soak them in water, and you drink a revius of water that has the taste of grapes in it. You don't have actual grape substance, just the taste has been absorbed in the water. That would be a violation if you hold ta'am, the taste ki'ikr, is like the original prohibited substance. Another concept that we will encounter, noisein ta'am lifgam. It's a prohibited taste that's gone bad. Lifgam meaning negative. By way of structure, we all, we've already indicated that the sukya at hand will continue to daf lamed chesom and aleph. And uh, you see a crown shape around Rabbi Avo and a firebox around Rabbi Yochanan. So the crown shape you see under our Mivne heading, Rabonim Shenoktu Emda 
Be'inyan Heter Mitztaref Liser. These are rabbis that have taken a position regarding this topic of the permitted joins up with the prohibited to complete the minimum shiur. The value in our firebox marking that won't be realized immediately, but until you get till the Lamed Ches, Omid Aleph, three lines from the top, there you will, we will make reference to Shitas Rebelozer. Interestingly, there Rebelozer is quoted also by Rebbe Avohu, and when we get there we'll have a chance to uh, comment on the contrast between Rebbe Lozer and Rebbe Yochanan over here. Now, let us take a look at the text of the Gemara itself. On Daf Lamed Heomid Beis, four lines from the bottom at the end of the line, Oma Rebbe Avohu, Oma Rebbe Yochanan, Kol Isurin Shebet Torah, with regard to all prohibited food items in the Torah, Ein Heter Metztaref Leisur, Chutz Meisure Nozir, this idea that the allowed would join with the forbidden doesn't exist except within the realm of items, food prohibited to the nazir. Sharei Omra Torah, in the case of nazir, it says in Bamidbar Perek Vav, Pasa Gimel, Mishras. The Gemara here quotes only one word from the Pasuk. The entire Pasuk you can see we've quoted on the side of our marked Gemaras. The Pesach reads, Miyayin v'sheichor yazir, choymetz yayin v'choymetz sheichor lo yishteh. The Nazir is warned to avoid uh, um, wine and wine vinegar. And the Pesach goes on to say, v'chol mishras anovim lo yishteh. V'anovim lachim v'yeveshim lo yochel. So in this Pesach you see v'chol mishras anovim. The word mishras has to be with soaking. What do we uh, have in mind when we say soaking? So, we mentioned before, that would be a case where you take, let us say, a piece of bread and soak it in wine, and the nausea would eat it. If you have uh, wine combined with the bread, equaling a, an olive quantity, that would be a nausea violation. So what have we said? You soaked bread. Now, bread is permitted to a nausea. But you soaked it in wine. The majority will assume for right now is the wine. But you don't have an olive quantity of wine in the bread. Only together with the bread do you have the minimum prohibited amount. With regard to a nausea, this is prohibited. Now, we turn to Daf Lamed Vav of an Aleph. Immediately at the top you see a bracketed section. The reason for the brackets is the point mentioned right after them, where the Gemara says, five lines from the top, Yosef Ravdimi, the Komar Lo Laha Shmaitza, Ravdimi was seated and he was saying, Rabbi Yochanan's teaching of Heter Mitzaref Le'isur, existing only within the realm of Nazir. The Gemara will challenge that uh, with Eisve Abaye. So that according to the Toysvah's commentary, Abaye's question is focused on that which Rabbi Yochanan said. And that's why we skipped the interim passage uh, to show the direct connection. Well, that having been said, we turn to the top line where we see another uh, crown shape. And in our original Mivne heading, we noted that these are Rabbonim. The Rabbonim that you see in the crown shape are relating to the topic of Heter Mitztaref Leisor. On the side, we have a Nosei a topic heading where we've written we are going to note in this bracketed section that there is a disagreement between Zir and Abaye regarding the minimum prohibited amount 
regarding offering on the altar of the Beis Hamikdash, the Temple Mizbeach, a substance called Saor. Saor is sour dough. It's highly fermented dough. If you want to refer to it as super chometz, so be it. It's very fermented. There's a prohibition of offering on the Mizbeach that substance. He calls or the Chodvashlo Satiru. We have a note before we read the Gemara, a note on the side, on the other side, the inside margin. We've called it Heter Mitzarif Isur. Number one, Rabbi Yochanan Isur Nazir. Rabbi Yochanan says this concept of Heter Mitzarif Isur is unique, restricted to the realm of Nazir. Ziiri. He will say, Saor Bal Taktiru. The prohibition of offering Saor on the Mizbeach. Let us say you have an item where you don't have an olive quantity of Saor, but combined with non fermented dough, you will have a total of an olive quantity, and you put that on the altar. According to Ziri, one will be in violation of the Pusuk that we referred to before, the prohibition of sacrificing, of offering on the Mizbeach, Sa'or. So even though you don't have the minimum quantity of a Kezayis, the Sa'or combined with non-fermented dough, a total of a Kezayis, would lead to a violation of Lo Saktir, of not offering. Another example of Heter Mitzvah Fleisur, according to Ziri, we will see, involves Chometz the Pesach. Chometz, fermented dough on Pesach, if you have less than a Kezayis of Chometz, but combined with something else, you will have a total of an olive quantity. According to Ziri, that would constitute a Pesach violation. Abaye mentions the concept of uh, Heter Mitzarf Isur with regard to, we'll say, all Isurim. Where that becomes manifest, we'll have to clarify that point when we get into the Gemara. That having been said, we go now to the top line, Ziiri Omar, Af Saor Beval Taktiru. Even Saor, the uh, sourdough, when placed on the Mizbech, less than an olive quantity, but done so together with other, we'll say, non forbidden substance vis a vis the Mizbech, equaling a total of a Kezayis, that would be a violation of. The pasuk we mentioned before, kol soor v'chol dvash lo sakti. The expression bal takti bal means do not like the word lo, do not offer. Keman Ziri's teaching is based on which Tanaic authority? Kerebi Elazar, the Dorish kol. In the pasuk we just cited, it said kol soor, and. Rebbe Lozer happens to say his point with regard to Chometz on Pesach where even if you have Chometz in a mixture form where you would pull out of a Chometz mixture an olive quantity and in that mixture you don't have a pure uh, olive quantity uh, an olive quantity of pure Chometz but it's mixed with other substances that would be a violation of a posuk. Rashi cites the posuk in the context of Passover. It says, Kol machmetzis lo sochelu. So Rebbe Lozar, in the context of Chometz on Pesach, looks on, at the word kol. Kol is an inclusive expression. And Ziri, following in Rebbe Lozar's footsteps, darshaning the word kol, as we cited before, kol saor v'chol dvash lo saktiru, Includes Saor Bebal Taktiru, just like Rebbe Lozer refers to Chomis Bepesach. The Gemara says, well, if Ziri is 
based on Rebbe Lazar, Iachi Le'inyon Chometz Nami. With regard to Chometz as well, then you would apply the principle of Heter Mitztarev Le'isor. So why doesn't Ziri mention that? The Gemara says in Hachinami, Ziri really does intend to mention that. He's not making a comment to the exclusion of Chometz on Pesach. So then why did Ziri focus on Sor Bebal Taktiru? Ziri is coming to the exclusion of Abaye's approach. The Omar, Abaye's approach is that when it comes to Haktora on the Mizbeach, there is no minimum quantity, any amount. In other words, according to Abaye, you don't need to come on to Tsiruf, to combining to reach a minimum quantity. So Abaye represents an opinion that Ziri is trying to exclude. Hence the Gemara says, we'll read again, La Fuke Mabaye, Domar Yesh Haktora Bepochos Mikazayas. According to Abaye, Haktora can Haktora that which is forbidden can is is considered violated even at less than an olive quantity. In other words, any amount, any negligible amount. Komash Malon, Ziri is informing us, Ein haktorah bepochus mikazayas. The idea of burning on the mezbeach, of offering something on the mezbeach in a uh, prohibited form, doesn't exist if it's less than an olive quantity. But as we mentioned earlier, the olive quantity doesn't have to be an olive quantity of pure prohibition. It could be an olive quantity made up of majority prohibited substance combined with a minority of allowed substance, but altogether, when put on the mezbeach, it is a, an olive quantity. And that would be uh, a, an example of heter mitzdarf Isur in a realm beyond that of nausea. I want to point out that the reference we made before to Abaye concerning Heter Mitzdar for Isur in uh, all Isurim, this will be appreciated as we go on in the Gemara where Abaye challenges Rabbi Yochanan's contention that Heter Mitzdar for Isur is limited to Nazir, and Abaye raises a question from another realm, the realm of Truma, and hence. The uh, the feeling or the impression that uh, Abaye gives us that Hector Mitzar Flisur is not something limited to uh, one specific realm. So now we continue and we'll see that very question. Before we get into the Gemara text itself, let's glance at the side. We have a Nosei slash Mivne heading. A volcano shape will appear. We call this a, in this particular case, a ma'akav, because we're going to notice this shape in an alternating direction as you go on in the Gemara. You continue down Lamed Vav Omid Beis on to Lamed Zion Omid Aleph. You'll notice how this marking scheme continues. It's a quite lengthy back and forth discussion. And with the narrow part of the trapezoid volcano shape facing upwards, Abaye Maksha Aravdimi Shehevi Dino Shel Reb Yochanan. Abaye will challenge Ravdimi, who had quoted uh, Reb Yochanan. Terak Benozir Kaim Hetter Mitzav Leisur Velo Bishari Surim. That was what uh, Ravdimi was quoting in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. That, as we've said already several times, that Heter Mitzar Isur is limited to Nazirus and not found in other areas of prohibition. Uh, Abaye will try to show that this appears by other prohibitions as well. Abai will cite a, an example from the case of Truma, the tithe separated from produce given to Kayhanim, which has obviously nothing to do with nausea. The inverted shape will represent Chuvos Shel Ravdimi, Ravdimi's responses. So, we continue in the Gemara. Yosef Ravdimi, the Komar Lo Laha Shmaitz Ravdimi, quotes Rabbi Yochanan, that says, except for Nazir. 
Eisve Abaye. Take note of the fact that this is a long question. It will take us to the top of Omid Beis. Eisve Abaye. And note the crown because he's another opinion regarding this concept of Heter Mitzvah Lisa. So what is Abaye's question? He quotes a Tanaic source, Hamikpe Shel Truma. Notice uh, two lines later, we have an, a, a, a flip case of Mikpe Shel Chulin. Well, what's Mikpe? Mikpe is a type of thick gravy. And Mikpe Shel Truma, it's a thick gravy that's based, it's a wine based gravy. There are also spices in this, Vahashum, Vahashemen Shel Chulin. Mixed into this, is some uh, garlic and some oil that is of chulin uh, status, meaning non-truma. Truma is something that has a certain level of holiness and must be kept away from that which would defile it. Amongst the different kinds of defiling sources is an individual called a tfu yom. This is a person that had been Tome, at the end of his Tuma period, he immerses in the mikveh, and before sundown, he has a Tvul Yom status. Tvul Yom meaning he has, he has immersed himself that day, prior to sundown. His status in the order of Tuma, he is called a Shani Lutuma. He's a second level Tuma, following an Ava Tuma, a Rishan Lutuma, a Shani Lutuma. A Shani Latuma is a type or a level of Tuma that can defile not just anything, but can defile Truma. Truma is sensitive to a Tvul Yom contact. And in our case, Vinoga Tvul Yom Bimik Tsasan, a Tvul Yom put his finger into this gravy. Uh, wine, truma wine based gravy, put his hand touched part of it, posal es kulan, he defiles the entire mixture the the mikpeh is the ikr that's the mainstay and it happens to be of truma so the the tfuyom's contact with it will ruin it mikpeh shel chulin and this section of the source is really what is of more interest to us, as you'll see later in the Gemara. Here you have a gravy, the which is basically chulin. Vashum vashemen shel truma. The the spices in it are actually truma. The nogat tvuyom b'mikzasan. The tvuyom touched part of it. Rashi has two approaches. Either he touched the uh, the garlic, uh, or the section where there was some oil in there, or he touched the the wine part of the gravy, but it's all together in one vessel, together with the with the truma spices. So the source says, "Lo posal ela mokoim mago." The only part of this gravy that becomes prohibited is the spot that he touched. The Havinon Ba, and we ask, Mokom Magoi Amai Posel. The point that he contacted, why is that ruined? The Yoma Rabo Bar Barchano Omra Byochonon Matam. What's the reason? Hoyo Vizar Loike Oleo Bekezayas. Because if a non Kohen, a Zar, is a non Kohen, would take an olive quantity of this mikpeh. This mikpeh is, as we said, is chulin with some truma spices in it. And he would take an olive quantity of it. He would be subject to loke. Loke means malchus. He would be subject to lashing. My time. Why would he be lashed? After all, an olive quantity of this, the mikpeh shil chulin with truma spices in it, you don't have an olive quantity of prohibited stuff in there? Why should he be punished? The Gemara continues on the top of Omid Beis. Lav mishum deheter mitztaref le'isur. Is it not because of this principle that the heter, the 
uh, in this case, the gravy which was chulin is joining up with the truma spices to equal an entire quantity, an olive quantity of that which will now call forbidden. But it's forbidden only because we were saying that the heter, the allowed, is joining up. So what do we see? We see even in a realm that's not nausea related. Here we're talking about truma and a non kohen eating it. And yet there's a violation. Omar Levo, Rav Dimi, representing Rabbi Yochanan, says, no, you've got it wrong. My kezayis, the czar is getting punished for eating a kezayis. It doesn't mean that he scooped out one olive quantity of mikpeh, but rather he was eating, uh, we'll say, a large amount of mikpeh, and in the course of, we'll say, four minutes, four minutes of eating, he will have eaten an olive quantity of pure truma. He's eaten many olive quantities in four minutes, but within all of the food that he ate, you will have found an olive quantity of truma alone. In other words, when I say alone, means you could have extracted a, a total of an olive quantity of truma in, in the food that he ate over the course of four minutes. So not like Abaye was trying to say that there was just one olive quantity altogether that he ate, and as far as how much prohibition was in there, there was less than a kazayas of prohibited substance, and still you're guilty. Rav Dimi says no. He ate many olive quantities of this gravy with the truma spices in and over the course of four minutes he will have consumed an olive quantity, a complete olive quantity of prohibited substance. And Rav Dimi says for that he will get lashed. The Gemara asks, Vachilas pras do raisahi. This idea of eating a pras, a pras as we said before, it's a certain quantity of food that you would eat over the course of four minutes. So is, is this a Torah-type violation that the eating that you do within the four minutes, if there is contained within all of the food that you ate an olive quantity of prohibited stuff, you are in violation of a Torah prohibition. Is that really so? Omar Leyen, yes, Rav Dimi says it is. Well, why is it that the Rabbonin disagree with Rebbe Lozer when it comes to the eating of Kusa Chabavli? Now, what's Kusa Chabavli? Kusa Chabavli, first of all, let's understand it in the context of Chometz Bepesach. It's made of fermented milk combined with bread. The uh, we'll say the majority of this food substance is the fermented uh, milk, fermented dairy stuff, uh, cheese or milk-like substance, uh, and there is also bread mixed in. If one eats this on Pesach, is he considered in violation of consuming chametz? So now, if you say that. Achilas pras is doraisa. In the uh, there, there happens to be the opinion of Rebbe Lozer that is strict, is stringent. But the Rabbonon say he is exempt. And our question is, why would the Rabbonon disagree with Rebbe Lozer? If you're going to eat, let's say, four minutes of eating kusa chabavli, are you not going to be eating a kezayis? of Chometz. You may recall that we made reference to Rebbe Lozar, uh back on Omen Aleph uh, in the uh, reference made to Ziri at the uh, the second line from the top of Lamed Vav Omen Aleph. Rebbe Lozer in the context of Chometz Pesach, Darshan, the Posuk that says Kol Machmetz is Lo Sochelu in which he learns that Chometz even when it's in a mixture constitutes a Torah violation. But the Rabbonon, they argue. Well, why should they argue if Kesayis Bechdei Achilas Pras is a Torah violation? As we said, in the course of eating of 
over four minutes, you will certainly have eaten a kazayas, a full olive quantity of chometz. So, yet the Rabbonon exempt when it comes to the eating of kusach habavli. Why is that? So the Gemara answers. Omar le Ravdimi says, Hanoch lekusach habavli. Hanoch means leave it aside, leave it out of our discussion. Why? Deleko kezayis bechte achilas pras. The food uh, uh, I'll say nature then of kusach habavli is that over the course of eating four minutes of it, you in fact will not be consuming an olive quantity of chometz. And he explains, e deka sorif le misraf. Sorif le misraf is a, a type of like gulping or rapid eating. Gulping down the kusach habavli. If you eat that, if you eat it like that, botlo daito eitzel kol adam. It's a rather, it's a sharp or very sour type of dish, which is used primarily as a dip. Someone who goes and drinks it down is eating in an unusual fashion, and that wouldn't be considered derech achila, and therefore he wouldn't be considered in violation of the Torah prohibition of eating chometz on Pesach. When the Torah speaks about eating, it speaks about the Torah prohibits, let's say, the normal type of consumption. So, sorof le misraf, a gulping down of kusa habavli, would be a very strange thing to do, and it's true. If you do that, you will end up consuming an olive quantity of chometz within a rather short amount of time, but that's an unusual way of eating, hence you, the Rabbonin would certainly exempt him. And e mishtar koshotar, and if you're going to use it, in, you're going to consume kusach habavli in the normal way as a dip, lo mishkachas kezayas bechdei achilas pras. Over four minutes of eating kusach habavli in a, a uh, eating it as a dip, you will in fact not consume even a kezayas of chametz. So there is no violation as far as the Rabbonin are concerned. But, in general, food mixtures where you have Esor mixed into Heter, and over the course of four minutes of eating that type of mixture, and there is an olive quantity of prohibi- prohibited food within that mixture, there will be a violation. And that was uh, Rav Dimi's explanation regarding the uh, the the mikpeh shilchulin with the truma spices mixed in. Eisve, we continue in the Gemara with Abaye again raising a challenge. Shte maduchos. Maduchos are uh, grinders or like a uh, mortar and pestle situation where you have the uh, the mortar containing a, a substance and. Achas shel truma, v'achas shel chulin. One was used for true contains truma, and one contains chulin. Ulefonov shte kederos, and there is also in front of them two pots. Achas shel truma, v'achas shel chulin. One pot is has a chulin food cooking in it, mundane common food, and the other pot has truma food, the uh, truma, the tithe given to kaihanim. The nuflu elu lusoch elu. The maduchos uh, and their respective, the, the respective, the contents of the maduchos of these um, mortars fell into the two pots. In other words, one maducha fell into one pot, and the other maducha fell into the other pot. Shtein mutaros. Both pots are mutar, meaning the chulin pot of food, we uh, will allow even a non kohen to eat. Why? Shani Oimer because I say in other words, we can impose our uh, um, explanation. Chulin l'toy chulin naflu truma l'toy truma nafla. The chulin spices fell into the chulin pot. Then the truma spices, which would have been a problem had they fallen into the chulin pot, 
but no, they fell into the truma pot. Uh, on the side, you'll notice we have a mivne, a structural note where a diamond appears. The Shani Omer expression you see here, and you'll see later, Kula, it represents a leniency. Liftor Bayashal Taruvas Truma Bechulin. We're alleviating the problem of Truma getting mixed into Chulin by our interpretation or our ascribing the facts, so to speak. Namely, our presumption that the Chulin fell into the Chulin pot and the Truma spices fell into the Truma pot. Now, the, now Abaye continues with his question. If as you Ravdini contended that Kezayas Bechde Achilas Pras is a Torah level violation, if you eat within four minutes a food mixture that has within it that which is usr, even though you didn't eat pure is you ate it as part of a mixture, but you could extract from that mixture an olive quantity of prohibited stuff, and you ate the entire mixture within the shiur zman, the span of time called which we suggested is uh, around four minutes, you're in violation of the Torah. Well, if that's the case, my amrinon shani omer. How is it that we can be so lenient as to Ascribe the uh, Hulin having fallen into the Hulin? Do you not have to concern yourself with a possible Torah level violation? Is there not a suffix here? A doubt concerning a Torah level prohibition? And we know, as a matter of rule, when you have a suffix, do raisa, we go the Chumrah. By the fact that we are lenient, says Abaye. You see from here that Kezayis Bechtei Achilles Pras is not something that would constitute a Torah level violation. And of course, if you replay the entire sukya, the issue where we saw the Mikpeh uh, Shechulin with the Truma spices in it and the Zar getting Malkus, Abaye of course would like to believe because Kezayis, because of Heter Mitzdar of the Isor. Arav Dimi tried to explain the problem there is you're eating a full kezayas of prohibited, prohibited stuff but within four minutes well if that's really a problem then why over here can we afford to be so lenient as to say well it's, uh, it's uh, in all likelihood that the chulin fell into the chulin and the truma fell into the truma. Don't you have to raise the possibility because of a Torah level Violation that maybe the truma fell into the chulin and prohibit a non kohen from eating the chulin. Now, Arav Dimi responds, Elomai. Well, uh, then, what do you, Abaye, want to say? Heter mitzdarf liisur. Well, Amai Amrinon Shani Omer. Why, according to you, who says that Heter mitzdarf liisur exists beyond Nazirus? Why, in this case, could we be so lenient? Even when you pull out of the chulin pot, the, we'll say, the possible truma that fell in, and you pull out a kezayas quantity of food, according to you, isn't there a problem of heter mitztarev le'isor? Why then does the Tanaic source enable us to be so lenient? So Avdimi continues, Elohanoch le'trumas tavlin the Rabbonan. You're dealing with a case of truma spices. Spices and the need to tithe from spices is merely rabbinic. The Torah's expectation of truma tithing applies to dogon tirosh v'yitzar, grains, wine, and olive oil. Spices and the need to tie them is merely rabbinic. So when you have a doubt concerning something of a rabbinic nature, we have a right to be makil. We can be lenient. So this source doesn't represent a challenge to me, says Rav Dimi, that in general, when you're dealing with a Torah-level prohibition, and you consume a mixture with Torah level prohibition mixed in, and in the course of four minutes you would eat an olive quantity, you in fact would be in violation.
Eisvei, Abaye comes back with a challenge, and he is going to raise again a challenge involving Truma and Chulin, and we're not going to be talking about spices, so we're going to assume that we have a Torah level Truma matter on hands. And you're going to see again the same type of logic of Shani Omer, where we're lenient. And if Keziah's Bechtei Achilas Pras was truly Doraisa, how can we be so lenient in this case? And hence Abaye's question. Now let's see the text. Eisve. Shte kupos, two boxes. Achas shel truma veachas shel chulin. One containing truma, food, and the other chulin. Lufneim shte soyin. Soy is a, a container. So a, a saw, technically speaking, is a measure. It's a vessel that has that measures a saw. And within these two measures, achas shel chulin veachas shel truma. Venoflu elu lutoch elu. The uh, each one fell into the other. Like we mentioned before that the kupos contained food, the rush points out they contain grain. And grain, as we mentioned, is something that is chayev in truma midoraisa. So we have these two large boxes, and in front of the two large boxes are two measures containing grain also, one of chulin and one of truma, and one measure fell into one box, and the other measure fell into the other box. We say, the source goes on to say, They are both allowed, because we have the right to say that Hulin fell into Hulin and Truma fell into the Truma. Hence, the Hulin doesn't have any Truma extin, and it's mutter for a non Kohen as well. Fiin Salka Daita Chapaye asks if it's really so that Kezayas Bechte Achilas Pras, the Raisa, Amaya Rinon Shani Omer, why is it here that we're so light, so lenient in saying that the Truma saw fell into the Truma box and not the other way around, and not that the Truma fell into the Hulin. Do we not have a Torah level suffake over here? That in the course of four minutes of eating, you will have consumed a Kazayas amount of Truma, even if it had fallen into the Hulin box. And as we mentioned earlier, you have a suffix doraisa. There's a matter of doubt over here. On the one hand, you can say that the truma fell into the truma and everything's fine. But isn't there a doubt that maybe the truma fell into the chulin? And if you would eat that mixture over the course of four minutes, you will have consumed a kezayas of truma. So how can we say that it's that the chulin a box is mutter for a non kohen. Abaye continues at the top of Daf Lamid Zion Omen Aleph. Bishlam Aladidi, the Amino Mishum Heter Mitzaref Isur. According to my approach, when uh, I was explaining the Mikpeh Shel Chulin and the Truma spices, and I introduced the possibility of uh, Heter Mitzarf Leiser going beyond Nazirus. I can tell you over here, Kagoin de Nefishi Chulin. There is a large amount of Chulin, so much so that we wouldn't say Heter Mitzarf Leiser unless the Isur is the majority. So that if you take an olive quantity of mixed substance, heter, allowed, and iser, and forbidden. And within that olive quantity, the majority is prohibited. Then we will say that the heter is mitzaref, the, the, the uh, permitted amount of food joins up to complete the olive quantity, but once again, provided the majority is prohibited, majority of that olive amount. Therefore, since you don't have that when you have a large amount of chulin, 
uh, relative to the small amount of truma that fell in, you don't have any hetter mitzvah for the Easter to begin with. Therefore, we can be lenient. But according to you, Rav Dini, that says that eating a quantity of uh, a kezayis quantity of, prohibit, of prohibited food within a span of four minutes when it's in a mixture, that that's a Torah level pro- prohibition. Even if there happens to be a majority, a large amount of chulin, so what? Is there still not the reality of eating a kezayis of Esau within the four minutes? And uh, maybe just to say the obvious, this idea of kezayis b'chdei achilus pras is a case that where by definition you're going to have the majority of permitted stuff. It's just that within four minutes of eating the uh, this, the, this mixed uh, food uh, uh, situation, you will be eating a kezayis of that which is prohibited. So how, according to you, Rav Dimi, can this Tanaic source present us with such a lenient approach to the to the doubt? Omale, Rav Dimi responds. Hanoch Lutrumo Bizman Haze Dirabonon. This source is talking about nowadays. Bizman Haze, this is a situation where historically the obligation of Truma dropped down from a Torah level to a rabbinic level. As far as when that happened and why that happened, let's leave that as a an interesting point, but outside the realm of our current shiur. Once again, Truma Bizman Hazeh is the Rabbonin. And the source is talking about the, we'll call it the Bizman Hazeh situation. And since it's the Rabbonin, since it's rabbinic, and you have a matter of doubt concerning a rabbinic ruling, namely the need to tithe even from grain, is only rabbinic nowadays. When you have a Suffolk the Rabbonin, we can afford to be lenient. And now Abaye asks. Notice we have a very long question. And uh, of course you can see that with our markings. On the side we have a no say a topic heading. And this we entitle Taram Ki'ikr. The mere taste of that which is prohibited. Do we view it as if it is considered like the actual uh, prohibited item? This, of course, applies all across the board to all kinds of uh, areas of prohibition. If you were to take, let us say, some prohibited meat, some pork, and cook it up in a pot with some potatoes, and you took out a kezayas of potatoes, and it has a pork taste absorbed in the potatoes, we would say that the potatoes are prohibited as if they were pork itself. That is, of course, if you hold... Ta'am ki'ikr, the, the mere taste of that which is prohibited is like the original prohibited uh, food. Abaye mishane kivun. Abaye, uh, will say, changes his, uh, his direction. Umatsia and suggests she mishras milamedes she tam ki'ikr. Now, mishras. I hope everyone recalls, appeared at the beginning of today's shiur, the shiur for, uh, for Daf Lamed Vov. Of course, we're spilling over. You can see we're involved in one long discussion. And on the, at the beginning of our shiur, we saw that Mishras was introduced by uh, Rabbi Yochanan as saying, is the source for Heter Mitztaref Le'isur and is uh, limited to the realm of Nazir. Abaye is going to try to, as we say, change directions and suggest that Mishras will teach us the principle of Ta'am Ki'ikr. Now the Gemara. Omar le Abaye. Meimai dahai Mishras. Who is to say that Mishras that you saw on the Aflamid Heomid Beis, Leheter Mitzdarf Leisur Huda'asa, that it is coming for that purpose. Dilma litain tam ki Maybe its purpose is to introduce this, we'll say, this new idea 
And what would be an example of Tom Kicker? If you took some grapes, let's say, say within the realm of Nazir, if you took some grapes and soaked them in water. And the water then had a, had a grape flavor to it. And uh, if you skip the bracketed section, you'll see the Gemara says, Lichiditanya, which illustrates the idea of Tom Kicker that Abaye just mentioned. On the side, we have a little note explaining why we have brackets. Uh, let's read the note. Achrea Sagraim, Muvaha Bosis. After the brackets, the Gemara will bring the basis. For Abai's new suggestion. The Gemara is going to express a sense of wonderment regarding Abaye's change of direction. Now, there's a little note we have uh, noted with a star in the Rashi, right across from here, more or less. The Rashi is a structural Rashi, meaning, let's read the words first. It says, Umakami de Messiah Abaye le Milse, before Abaye finishes his point, and we have, with our markings, you can see that Abaye is making a long point. He has a long question that he's raising. Before he finishes his, po- his question, Maktin le Hashas le Fuche, the Gemara, the Shas, the, the Talmud interrupts. Uh, Abaye with its own observation regarding Abaye. So Abaye is, in a sense, is raising a question, a long question, and in the middle the Gemara interrupts. Now, let's take a look at the interruption. What did Abaye just say? Abaye just said, you know, Mishrasa, doesn't that come to tell me uh, uh, the concept of Tam Ki'ikr? So now, in the Gemara, Ula Abaye Me'ikara Abaye originally was troubled by what Rav Dimi had said. Namely, uh, Rav Dimi, he quoted Rabbi Yochanan that Mishras teaches me heter mitzdarav le'isor. And that that is something that applies only to Nazir. And Abaye questioned that. The komoisiv le kol halin tiyufta. And Abaye raised all those questions that we saw along the way to show that Heter Mitzaref Le'isur applies to all Isurim. So Abaye was, was, we'll say, was gung-ho in his, in his commitment to Mishras. Yes, it teaches me a principle of Heter Mitzaref Le'isur, but it's not limited to Nozir. Mishras teaches me across the boards. And Abai all of a sudden seems to abandon his campaign and says, That Mishras comes to teach me a, a new principle where there's mere taste of that which is forbidden is like the original prohibited stuff. And that would be that even in a case of Nazir, Mishras is... Uh, of to tell us Tom Kicker and not for Heter Mitzvah Lisa. This would be a very radical, a very radical change on the part of Abaye. Gemara explains Bosar Deshani Lay after Ravdimi successfully answered Abaye's questions. Omale Abaye suggested, well, Dilma Litain Tom Kicker who dasa. So it seems, as the Gemara observes, that Abaye was very impressed with Ravdimi's responses, and hence Abai takes a new track altogether with regard to Mishras. Namely, who says that Mishras is to tell me Hefter Mitzdarf Lisa? Maybe Mishras tells me Tam Ki'ikr. It would appear to me that if you want to note a prominent difference between the concept of Tam Ki'ikr and Hefter Mitzdarf Lisa, in the case of Hefter Mitzdarf Lisa, there is actual prohibited substance in the olive quantity that you will be eating. It's just that you don't have a full olive quantity of that which is prohibited. But there is an olive, there is actual prohibited substance. In Tom Ki'ikr, you, d- you just have mere taste. You don't have any actual prohibited substance. 
Now, we continue in the Gemara with Abaye's uh, point. Lechidetanya. Abaye had said that Mishras might very well be to teach me Tom Kicker, as you see in the following source. Mishras. Again, quote from the Posuk. Litain Tom Kicker. To tell that there is forbidden even mere taste, as if it's original prohibited food. Sheim shora anovim bimayim. If you were to have soaked some grapes in water. Fiyesh bantaram yayin. And there's a wine taste to the water regarding a nausea chayev. A nausea would be in violation. But the source goes beyond that. And from here, we would expand to all areas of Torah prohibition. And on what basis? And here we use Kalvachomer logic, where we first describe the elements of Nazirus, and then we make reference to other prohibited areas of the Torah. Uma nazir she'ein isuro isur olam. Nazirus is muter is released from restriction after thirty days. It's not isur olam. It's not a permanent prohibition. Fi'ein isuro isur hano. A nazir is allowed to benefit from great products. It's not isur hano means that which is prohibited even from mere benefit. A nazir is allowed to sell grapes. Fiesh heter leisuro, and the nazirus prohibition Tosef explains is a type of Easter that has heter to it. Means it can be released by consulting a sage. We call that being matir neder, so that nazirus on three counts can be described as a fairly, we'll say, light level area of prohibition. And yet, also boy Tom Kicker, the Torah says that mere wine taste is as if it's an actual grape or wine product. As we explained before, with the grapes soaked in the water as being prohibited to the nausea. So if for a nausea, which is a rather, we'll say, light level area of halacha, we have t- the Tom Kicker prohibition. Kilei HaKerem Kilei HaKerem also known as Kilayim is a, a vineyard in which grains were growing those uh, the products grown in uh, Kilei HaKerem uh, the, the grains that grow in the midst of a vineyard uh, are strictly prohibited and on the three points that we just mentioned as being uh, lenient with regard to Nazir, you'll see here restriction, you'll see stringency. Sheisuran Isur Oilam. Kile Hakerem are permanently prohibited. Visuran Isur Hano, and one is not allowed to benefit from them. Vien Heter Li Suran, there's no allowance, there's no release from that Isur. Eno din shiase boy tam kicker, all the more so when it comes to products prohibited uh, by virtue of their being kile hakerem. Certainly, we would say that the mere taste is as if it's the original. Vehu hadin li orla bishtayim. Orla are fruits from a fruit tree within the first three years of. There of that tree's life. And Orla is similar to Kilea Kerem on two of the three points. And they are the Orla fruits. Those fruits that grew within the first three years are also forever. And they're also prohibited to benefit from. The third point about the Esor of Orla being released, it does get released after the third year of the tree's life. But on two of the three points, Orla is more strict, is more uh, stringent than Nazir. 
And therefore, if in the realm of Nazir you're going to say Tom Kicker, all the more so if you have some, let's say, Orla fruits that were soaked in water and there's a taste of the Orla fruit taste in that water, certainly that would be prohibited on the grounds of Tom Kicker. So Rav Dim, Rav, Rav Abaye at this point finishes his long question by saying, you know, Mishras, who says that Mishras is at all teaching what Rabbi Yochanan, who Rav Dimi represented, namely Heter Mitzaref Leisur, when Mishras might very well be teaching me Tam Kiker. Omar Lei, Rav Dimi responds, Homoni Rabonon. The source you just cited is in accordance with the Rabbonon, that Mishras, in fact, teaches me Tam Kiker. Rabbi Avo, Ki Koma, Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Avo was back on the Flamid Heomet Aleph. He, at the end of, uh, I should say, at the end of Lamed Heomet Base, Rabbi um, Avo was the one that, that, that quoted Rabbi Yochanan. So, when you see Rabbi Avo, you're in effect seeing Rabbi Yochanan. So, that, that, that point made by Rabbi Avo was in accordance with the Tano Rebbe Akifa. Namely, that Mishras teaches me Heter Mitztaref Le'isur, that is, an, that's Rebbe Akiva. At this point, the Gemara then seeks out a source in which Rebbe Akiva would have said that. 